It's called an inside out umbrella. It goes inside out. Prop it up and the water doesn't dribble on the floor. So <laughs> behind them is the Euronymous uh, Lady, the burning bush. So in the fall, the burning bush will turn into the reddish pink. And this tall tree here is a Kentucky coffee tree. And there's, there's, um, there's only one actually that I that I can recall in the garden, but there's some along the back drive that are planted. The quarry garden was started by H.F. DuPont in 1961, 62. And he was 81, 82. H.F. DuPont was born in, in 1880. So it was a an old working quarry. In the 60s, early 60s, he wanted to make it into a um, an ornamental garden. So what he wanted to do is, we'll, we'll walk down there and, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But the the rock walls that were exposed, he he um, brought in stone, and with a crane, they were able to um, essentially tear it up and create little planting pockets within the quarry. There are actually um, three to four old quarries on the estate. This would be one of them. Um, on the other side of the road, uh, once we get down the bridge, we, there's a, a dirt trail that leads up to a second quarry, old quarry. And then there was um, kind of coming in toward the coach house and post office area up to the right. There's a, um, an old quarry there that is somewhat maintained as a garden area. And then the, a fourth quarry, from what I've been told, was above our East Barn uh, complex. The quarry area um, basically is part of this corner. Design techniques is in mass. We like to plant things in mass so when they bloom you have a big display. So in here we have a lot of the um, Pucara velosa and which flowers in, in kind of late summer. And there's also some anemone in here that blooms in the, in the summer as well. Red buds in here. Uh, they look nice a couple weeks ago but they're, they're pretty much done. I have some uh, native ginger in here, some hosta, some fern, and uh, this past fall I planted some bellwort eubularia in here, so hopefully that will expand. I have Virginia bluebells, and then these are the um, the uh, Spanish bluebells. Just behind it is the native pachysandra. So during the growing season, it's a really nice plant, really shoots up and uh, looks attractive, but it's not really, I wouldn't call an evergreen like the Japanese uh, Pachysandra. Actually this week, I'd say is, is peak for the Primulas. Um, most of what you see here, if not all of it, is Primula japonica. And I have some other species back in that corner that bloom a little later and they're not as, uh, as large as the japonica. Uh, I have some iris that will bloom. There's uh, three or four different uh, species in here. Some primula on the other side that are in flower now. Um, they're more of a, a woodland type uh, species. You can see how the stones were kind of layered. They were brought in and stacked um, to create kind of a terrace effect. And along this side, some of them were actually faced like upright to create kind of a, a wall effect. This bowl here is what would have been the original quarry. There's very little exposed bedrock. I think kind of around this corner is kind of the um, original bedrock as well as um, down below the um, underneath the bridge. When HF in the, in the early 60s wanted to make this into a garden area, he wanted to plant in the bog area, but the water was not flowing. So 
it was too wet. The winters were too wet for the primula. They would just rot out. So he, um, he had his, his workers put in channels to get the water flowing to dry out the bog so the, um, the plants would not rot out. Early 90s, um, you know, all the channels that silted out, silted in, so they had to be cleaned out and kind of restored so to get the water flowing again. Oh, the channel looks like it's really flowing yeah, here. It is. We get good flow. So the channel, um, does it have a source or, or is that, there's a source here in the quarry? Well, it's a natural spring. Oh. Um, but the main one is in that far corner. And from what I heard from some, when I first started here, from some of the people that worked here for decades, uh, they said they used to drink from it. But the um, septic tank and the um, restrooms polluted the groundwater. So they, um, they couldn't drink from it anymore. There's flow, even in the droughtiest of summers, there's flow coming out. And it, it just funnels from, you know, that, the fields down into this area. It will flow into, um, well, Wilson Run, uh, at Winnetou we call it Glenny Run. It's uh, C-L-E-N-N-Y, uh, after the farmer that lived on the property. But, uh, and from there? It, from there it will flow into um, the Brandywine. A laminated photo of the quarry ridge, just a mock up. Quarry ridge. Thank you. You're welcome. Do it, Anne. Okay, thank you. You were talking about the birds that uh, like the quarry garden. Well, they, they come, it's a source of water because it never freezes. They can bathe, they can drink. So it's kind of like a, an oasis for them in the wintertime. What birds do you see in the quarry garden? Oh, you'll see all kinds the orioles that nest in the tulip poplars. There's uh, catbirds, robins, wrens, uh, there's warblers um, that, will, that will be in the area. Um, a lot of them migrate through, but um, you know, you'll see all kinds really that swing down.